I want to speak about the Tevilah and the Ruach HaKodesh. It's a thing that Yohanan, the the Magbil, the the uh, the, uh, the 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 V, the Cohen that he was in the wilderness. He said, "I'm going to give a mikvah in a mikvah maim, but one is coming after me. He will give them a mikvah in the Ruach Hakodesh." And and then Yeshua, after these men are regenerated, at the end of the book of Luke, he tells them that there's this post-regeneration experience that they have to wait for. They can't just blunder out there and start evangelizing. Yeah. They can't be just entry-level believers, but they have to get this endowment of power from on high. And then in the, uh, in the writings of Luke, he shows this as something that, uh, all believers, there, there's a, uh, they have to be regularized. Uh, once they have one mikvah, they have to be regularized with the other mikvah, even if that means that the apostles have to come down uh, from Jerusalem or if Paul has to come to uh, Ephesus. And you see this uh, uh, over and over again. You, you, you see uh, uh, he's making this point. It's not a small point. It's a repeated point. He makes it over and again. Acts chapter 2, verse 4. Acts chapter 10, verses 45 to 46. Acts chapter 19, verse 6. And every time this is involved, it, there's a matter of glossolalia. Now, uh, in the Greek, in, uh, uh, in Acts chapter uh, 10, verse um, 46, we see that uh, Kepha, when he looks at these uh, non-Jews who've just received the mikvah in the Ruach HaKodesh in Cornelius' house, he says, Gamma Alpha Rho, Gar, a little conjunction, but it has the quality of, of inference. He's making an inference. We see that we can't uh, hold back giving them the mikvah in the uh, mikvah maim uh, because for with you see he's, he's making an inference we see that the same thing that happened to us back in Jerusalem happened to them namely glossolalia now that's right there now friend let me tell you something that little word gar that little word in Acts chapter 10 verse 46 listen friend if, if Kepha sees that glossolalia is normative sign of the mikvah in the Ruach HaKodesh, if Luke sees it and puts this in his theology and in his, uh, and in his book, then I better see it. Uh, and so uh, that's, our, that's our doctrine. We're looking for this sign. And of course, there are many other things involved in, 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 uh, in this. But this is the normative uh, sign that Peter was looking for. And when he saw it, it, it convinced him that they had had the same experience, these non-Jews, that the Jews had had, the 120 who were in the upper room uh, on the first day of Shavuos when they first began to preach. Now here in, in Romans, you see that Paul also is not leaving it out of his presentation of the Basurus HaGe'olah. Because in Romans chapter 8, and I'm reading from the Orthodox Jewish Bible, he says, The Ruach HaKodesh himself intercedes on our behalf with labor pang groans not intelligibly uttered. They are uttered, but they're not intelligibly uttered. This is a reference to glossolalia in uh, Romans chapter 8. Now, you might say, well, here's a fundamentalist Pentecostal giving us his doctrine. No, that's not true. Here is a liberal theologian. His name is Ernst Kosman. And on page 241 in his commentary on Romans, he says, praying in tongues, glossolalia is what is involved here. And uh, I, I, I really wish you would look at this because... Because this is what the Bible teaches. It's not a negligible doctrine. And when I think of all the tragedies that have happened in the body of Mashiach, 
where if somebody had just prayed in tongues for a few hours, a few days, or a few weeks, they could have gotten through the crisis that they were going through. If you're suicidal and you put a gun to your head and you're going to blow your brains out, if you will just say, wait a minute, wait a minute, and speak in tongues until that, that, that terrible darkness and that terrible uh, depression and that, that terrible murderous uh, uh, evil thing leaves you. You see, we, we all need to uh, have this gift. And uh, uh, we don't see anybody denied the gift. Uh, if, you, if you ask your father for, for a, a fish, will he give you a snake? How much more will he give the Ruach HaKodesh to those who ask him? And so today I'm urging you to seek this wonderful empowerment. You need it. I guarantee you the ministry that I've had for the last 40 years, if I had not had this power, I would have been picked off several times. A terrible scandal and remorse and, and defeat would have uh, been my legacy. But by the mercy of God, the Lord led me to seek this gift and this endowment and this power when I first became a believer. And the Lord has used it to yank me out of many tight places where otherwise I might have been defeated. And so uh, what I'm asking you to do is to pray and say, Lord, if there's anything that is not right with my life, take it away. I thank you that I have the Holy Spirit because I can confess that Mashiach is, is Adonainu. Uh, but I want this post-regeneration empowerment with the evidence of glossolalia. And Lord, I'm going to pray and I'm going to ask that the Lord would fill me and uh, that I would have this uh, prayer language at my disposal so that the Holy Spirit can pray through me with, uh, with, with utterances that are not intelligible but are, uh, but are edifying to my spirit and which uh, the Lord can use to, to keep me uh, in many, in many pl places where I cannot pray with my mind because I'm so overwhelmed. I need a, a, a spiritual uh, prayer life where the Holy Spirit prays through me. And I give you all the praise for this. And I pray, dear God, that people who watch this video will seek the mighty uh, endowment of power from on high. In Yeshua's name, amen.